Hello everyone, I'm up here in Soda Springs, Idaho, famous for its geyser and its many naturally carbonated springs. I'm here at Hooper Springs. It is probably the most famous springs here in Soda Springs. And so let's have a look. So to, or Hooper Springs is here in this park. The park itself is about a hundred years old, but man, is it beautiful. It's just such an idyllic spot. But anyway, you're here for the springs, so let's go. Let's just go up this hundred year old bridge. And here in this little pavilion that was made in the 1930s by the Civilian Conservation Corps is the actual spring. Over here is this sign that uh, says what it has in it. Drink deeply of nature's best beverage. I think I shall. Here you can see the natural carbonation. So I'll give you a look at what it looks like under the water here. Okay, now that you've seen underwater, let's have a taste. <clears throat> Has a bit of a coppery taste to it. Uh, 200 years ago, this was known as Beer Springs, and it was called Beer Springs because a trapper thought it tasted like flat beer. Jim Bridger later said that the only way you could think this tastes like flat beer is if you've forgotten what the taste of beer tastes like. So anyway, it's not too bad, but uh, I wouldn't say it's for everybody. Soda Springs in the middle of the 19th century and before was home to dozens and dozens of springs at least. And even today, there's just an abundance of water here in the middle of the western U.S., you know, a place not typically known for its water. Check this out. That's probably the biggest spring I've ever seen in my life. And this little river or stream here, it's the, the soda river or stream but just check that out that's wild I mean you can tell it's been controlled a bit by humans but yeah it's just impressive to give you a little history of the Soda Springs area Soda Springs lies along the old Oregon Trail where Pioneers found a number of springs which served as oases. Some springs were warm, in which the pioneers would do laundry, and I'm sure that was much appreciated, having clean laundry. Um, you could drink freely from the springs here because they were fresh, straight from the ground. They didn't have any real chance to be contaminated, so you could drink the water without any fear of getting sick, and that holds true today. A little ways down the road towards, uh, it's called Alexander these days, it was Steamboat Springs. Now it's covered up by a reservoir. But Steamboat Springs was so called because it puffed and chuffed 
up from the ground and sounded like a steamboat. Uh, there's different uh, recordings where the steamboat springs would puff up three feet. Some said it puffed up five feet, but it was still something that the pioneers found impress impressive enough to write about. This is another carbonated spring here at Soda Springs. This one's called Octagon Springs because of the octagonal little gazebo that sits over the spring. This was a very popular spring to visitors of the Soda Springs between the 1890s up until the 1920s. Well, I guess it's still even popular, to, popular today. But just across the street over here, there was a big fancy hotel. And so if you arrived here on the train, you'd want to come over to Octagon Springs to sample the water. <clears throat> now this spring is typically favored over Hooper Springs in terms of taste. So Hooper Springs is much, much bigger. But it is neat to see just the uh, water bubbling up from the ground. So let's give this one a taste test. Okay. It's definitely better than Hooper Springs. It tastes just like a light, fizzy, water yep it's good one of the things that people did in years past was bring sugar or flavoring packets to the spring here to kind of spice it up in a way um, it's still a popular thing to do I've seen people do it I've done it myself here it's it's a great way to just add flavor to your water so this is Soda Springs captive geyser it's called a captive geyser because they have it under control. It goes off every hour on the hour. Now this is, you know, a naturally occurring geyser, but it was drilled in 1937 when they were drilling for hot water to make a bathhouse. Well, because of the carbonation and the way it is, it, the water ended up not being hot enough to make a bathhouse. Um, a few weeks after they drilled this geyser, the United States Secretary of the Interior sent a telegram to the Soda Springs mayor asking them to get this thing under control because it's throwing off Old Faithful in Yellowstone. So they capped the geyser, but of course, it didn't do anything to Yellowstone. But today, the geyser is a popular tourist attraction. You can always expect to see people gather at the park on the hour. Um, this is very, very hard water. So if the wind is, if you've got a good stiff wind that day and it's blowing towards the parking lot, you're going to get hard water in your car and it can be a little bit of a problem to try and scrub clean. So watch out for that. And in the cemetery on the left-hand side of the screen here, uh, there's a couple interesting graves. There's the wagon box grave, which is the grave of a family that was killed back in the early 1860s and some other pioneers found them and bury their bodies in their very own wagon box. So that's there in the cemetery. They say that this geyser is the only captive geyser in the world. I'm not 100% sure of that. I wouldn't doubt that there's another captive geyser somewhere else on the globe. But in any event, Soda Springs is a really interesting town. It's a slice of 20th century America, and it's just got a good nostalgic feel to it. But it's not a ghost town, it's not dead. So if you get a chance, definitely visit Soda Springs. I want to thank you for watching, and I hope to catch you in the next one.